And we are spinning. We are live. What is up, wrestling fans? It's Doug and Kevin from Two Bros Wrestling Show. Kevin is on the road. He just left Extreme Rules 2021. Kevin, how's it going, man? I am doing good. Uh, I, I am uh, on my way, as you said, out after having the live experience. I got a great parking spot so I could go as live as fast as I possibly could at the end of Extreme Rules. And uh, I'm pumped, Doug. I'm, I'm eager to talk about it. I know normally we start these things out by, uh, you know, saying in general what we felt about the pay-per-view. I think being in person probably is going to color my experience a little bit because there's just something about, you know, live energy of a crowd that, uh, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be the best overall judge on how it came across overall. Um, two so, things I will the live experience is that, you know, I'd have the pleasure of seeing like Rawls and SmackDown, a couple of impacts, even ECW and Ring of Honor and, and, and do TV back in the day. I've only seen one pay-per-view in person, that was Impact. And so uh, the, the live experience here was uh, was uh, something else. I mean, Pyro is the bigger, the screen's the bigger, the presentation's bigger, uh, the pacing is much quicker without, uh, you know, the commercials and all. So uh, I, the, I don't know if it came across on TV how it looked or if they tried to pretend it was a sellout. Um, I'd say we had 80% maybe capacity. The hard Everything opposite the hard camera was full from bowl all the way up to the top. But uh, behind the hard, hard camera, which is where I was, right next to that hard camera, um, right next to that, what we uh, you had was uh, probably the whole top deck, uh, the whole top part of the bowl there was uh, curtained off. Um, also, a lot of signs being taken tonight. I know you probably you know mm. uh, like to read those stories about WWE uh, when they were doing uh, live TV confiscating signs and while i can't say for certain that they all were aew related i can say that a lot of the ones that i saw certainly were aew related being taken from the people tonight that is very interesting so this is going to be an interesting show for us because you are you are hype fresh off of the live experience and i am fresh off a uh, lithotripsy and battling with the remnants of a kidney stone and fairly medicated right now so it's going to be a very different experience for both of us and honestly there are parts of the pay-per-view tonight where I was battling my medication and missed some, some of the pay-per-view I think I saw most of it but my uh, my experience is going to color my experience of the show uh, as well <laughs> and it, it is interesting because some of the stuff you were sending me, some of the pics, there's obviously more than a seven second delay going on because, you know, things, images you were sending me at times for the pics you were taking, it looked, there was probably like a full minute or maybe even longer before what the image that you had sent me would actually show up uh, on my screen. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Wow. I always knew they ran with a delay in case of, you know, wardrobe malfunctions or language or what have you. But, uh, wow. Uh, sometimes yeah. my go out so slow, particularly when you're in a crowd, I would never have anticipated that they were arriving that soon before you were actually seeing that happen on television. Uh, I, was, I was really shocked by that. I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty interesting that, you know, it's taken, you know, uh, you were sending me stuff. I was seeing it before I was actually seeing it on my, on my screen here at home watching the pay-per-view. So well, was... Before we do get into the spoilers or anything like that, Doug, I will say, too, um, it was a very hot crowd. I don't know if it came across that way on TV or not. Uh, and that crowd stayed with WWE, even through the really questionable booking decisions, which I know we're also going to get to in a few mm -hmm. minutes. So yeah. whenever you're ready, I'll let you lead the dance. Yeah, I'm pulling it up here on my phone, too, so I, I make sure that we hit everything. Another thing that I don't know if anybody else experienced this, but during the pre-show, which I actually did catch tonight, um, on Peacock, apparently all the announce tables were, uh, the feed for all the announce tables were running all at the same time. So during the, the pre-show match with uh, Liv Morgan and Carmella, I had not only the... Uh, SmackDown announcers, but I had the Spanish announce table. I'm pretty sure I had the German, the Spanish, the Japanese, 
<laughs> wow. All the announce tables <laughs> all going at once, which was very disorienting. By the time of the full show, that got cleaned up. So, um, so Doug, are you sure, are you sure that uh, if I'm like uh, sending you uh, photos of things before they actually happen and you're hearing like 20 different languages in your head, are you sure you're not just tripping on all those drugs that you're on? <laughs> uh, again, I, I have I, I'm battling a seven millimeter kidney stone, which was broken up on Friday, but its remnants you know remain in me and are slowly passing. So I am pretty medicated, but I'm pretty uh -oh. sure. Uh, yeah, my 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 six year old was commenting very early on about what was going on, <laughs> and he was also looking for you in the crowd. So. <laughs> Well, I do think we also need to be honest with the people since you're, you know, being uh, open about your condition. Let's just be, uh, put it all on the table. Uh, folks, uh, Doug watched the recent Dark Side of the Ring like most of us did. And uh, from my understanding, he attempted the Ric Flair helicopter and it did not go well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> with that, Doug, the pre-show match. Hey, the, uh, as disorienting as the announcing was, I had to turn it down. But, you know, pre-show, I caught the pre-show and actually enjoyed the match. I thought Liv was rocking a uh, great DX uh, revival look in her green and black. And and, and I, I, it was a good match overall. You know, how was it in the uh, how was it actually in the uh, in the arena? I think that you get a lot of goodwill uh, in that first match because the crowd so hopped up to see the action start that you could put on, you know, not that great of a performance and probably it'd still go over well. However, both these ladies worked hard. Um, I know we've talked about it before. Not sure what Carmella ha has done uh, you know, to, to maybe fall out of favor, but fall out of favor she certainly has. Um, but, I mean, I'm all for anything that gets me some more Liv Morgan on TV. I think she's fantastic and underutilized so hopefully this is the start of a sustained push i really liked her uh her double says that double feet to the back thing and of course the storyline was that she'd hurt carmella's nose on it uh mm. buckle a couple weeks ago in person her doing it on the outside of the ring sending carmella into the uh, announce table looked really great really solid pre-show match enjoyed it and the crowd seemed to be really like it too i really liked it so let's move on to this uh, New Day versus, uh, what do we have here? Bobby Lashley and, and who? <laughs> and, uh, AJ and, and Omos. This oh, is yeah. one that, if they got announced beforehand, it must have been hours beforehand when I was on the road to Columbus because we didn't predict this one. I didn't know this one was, was uh, happening. Um, but uh, maybe you did. I don't know. Did you catch wind that this was being added? I didn't. I heard something about an attack during the pre-show that made this match possible or something like that, but I, I completely missed that. But, again, I'm not... I'm, I'm sorry. When they, when they ahead, did the opening at the beginning of the pay-per-view and I saw Lashley and uh, Bobby both represented, I got hopeful that maybe something had happened and we were going to get their rematch because I really had wanted to see that. But, um, you know... Not a very consequential match as far as nothing on the line, but as far as kicking up, uh, open a pay-per-view, uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see a couple of the wrestlers that I did not think I would get a chance to see. New Day is still ridiculously over. If crowd reaction is any uh, indication as to the start of Big E's title reign, it's going to go extremely well because they were very, very into uh, Big E. And the only other thing I'll say about this match uh, well, other than I really, the, the feat of strength of Bobby catching uh, Kofi Kingston was just fantastic. But uh, Omos, green as all get out and was obviously the weak point of the match. However, I will say that I kind of get it when you see him live. It is pretty freaking impressive. You got a beast like Bobby Lashley, and I'm seeing him stand over in the corner there. And Bobby Lashley, who's the, you know, the size of a, a side of a house, uh, is dwarfed standing there next to Omos. So, you know, I know in the old school days before we all started work, uh, talking work rates and watching matches on YouTube over and over and right. over and realizing things, it was all, let's get these freaks of nature in front of a live crowd and people's mouths will drop open when they see them. Uh, and that's how you're on the Giants and stuff got over back in the day. I can see it with Omos. It is pretty impressive live to see a, a human being of that size. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> he is definitely not impressive on screen. I mean, I mean, other than size wise, because you know you still you still see him. And I think sometimes it takes seeing these guys live to get an idea of how big or actually how small they are. I remember actually, you know, seeing Jericho, Christian, and and Shane Helms outside of a wrestling environment uh, here in, in Huntington once, and it was very bizarre because you know I'm bigger than all three of those dudes. But you know they're larger than live figures. But you know I can imagine how Amos uh, is live. But overall, I thought this match this match did what it was supposed to, which is get the crowd pumped. I thought it was a great opener for a pay per view, or for the pay per view proper, not being in the pre show. And you know, I, I think it says a lot about Big E. I am curious though. Do you, do you get to see the like the on screen vignettes where Bobby throws a fit and then Big E accepts a challenge for tomorrow? Did you get to see that? In, in the yeah, thank you. Uh, I, that is something I probably should have mentioned at the beginning, too, that, you know, having never attended a WWE pay-per-view, I wasn't sure how they did that sort of thing. But the back uh, vignette, the commercials, all of that uh, airs on the big screen uh, the same as it does at home. And okay. uh, all those seem to more so than I noticed at live shows or even at the Raw, Raw and SmackDown tapings I've been to, um, they seem to have the whole arena mic'd up, like, I could hear the referee counting from where I was. Every smack of the mat, it definitely adds a lot of ambiance into the arena, more action. You know, there's nothing worse than seeing, like, a you know, a 300-pound man hit the mat and it not make a sound, you know, right. to kind of take control of it when you're there live. But they have everything mic to the extreme. So that's that's interesting <laughs> that, that you guys get, you get to hear that in the arena. All right, let's jump yeah. on to this, uh, the Usos and the uh, Street Profits here. That's the next match, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do. So I've never really been a Street Profits fan. I really dig the Usos and what's going on there. To me, this this was a pretty standard tag team match. You know, the right team won to, to keep the Usos storyline moving forward and and that's really all I got about this because this is where I, my match were really starting to kick kick in, and and I started to miss parts of the show. But you know, for the most part, I, I made it. I did make it through this match, and it was it was just a standard tag match for me. How about there in the arena? What was your take on it, man? Uh, I'm thinking it's your drugs kicking in. Okay. <laughs> now in the arena, um, honestly, this might have been my match of the night. But man, no. I think I'm probably into the street profits more than than you. Uh -huh. uh, I really like them as a team, but and I don't mean the Marty Jannetty uh, Dawkins here because I hope they stay together for a while longer. But if if at some point in time Montez Ford is not a single star, then someone backstage isn't doing their job. Uh, the man's charisma and athleticism, particularly in person, just leap off the screen. Uh, I don't know how it looked on uh, cam uh, on camera, but in the arena. Uh, that ridiculous dive that he did over the turnbuckle out onto everyone on the floor looked really sick from where I was uh, was standing. And it, then, of it course, looked, it did look ridiculous, brother. It did. Oh, I mean, he really does need to be a single star at some point in the future. Uh, I'm kind of glad, though, in a way that this one went the way it did, uh, just because hopefully it can continue. I think they're two of the better teams in WWE. Uh, and and because of that, I think that, you know, there's not a lot of, like, you know, natural tag teams currently on the right. roster. So I think they can get uh, some more juice out of this one by continuing this feud because the storyline of the match was uh, Montez Ford's uh, ribs being worked on, and, and in, in the end, that kind of could, you know, sort of, it gives them an out for an excuse that uh, it was such a tight contest with back and forth and near falls that they could easily... Um, do rematches and, and have a, a just cause to demand one. I will say that this was the first match of the night uh, that started a, a This Is Awesome chant in the uh, – got a, a This Is Awesome chant from the live crowd on a couple of occasions, and it, uh, in my mind was well-deserved. Uh, the action back and forth. So uh, excellent. It, it came across really well live. Uh, and uh, But the, the, you know, the bloodline, I mean, obviously that storyline's got to keep, uh, keep going the direction it's going right now. All right, man. Let's 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 roll along here. I'm I'm Mr. Low Energy tonight, and you're all like hyped. <laughs> this is I'm going to have hours from home, man. I gotta be hyped. Oh my goodness. I'm okay. 
It's <laughs> working tomorrow, so I gotta stay up. Yeah, I'm. 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 <laughs> I am not working tomorrow because I'm struggling. I'm, I'm just struggling. But okay, so Charlotte Flair and Alexa Bliss, man. Again, you know, I was starting to drift a bit here, but I caught most of this one too. And I thought Charlotte was great. I thought Alexa was great, but I just think that this whole Alexa thing is stupid. I I thought that this whole ending with Alexa with the Alka Seltzer in her mouth, I don't, I'm not sure if she was supposed to be foaming at the mouth, and I'm not sure if you caught that live where oh, she's yeah. screaming and foaming at the mouth, but it was very obvious that there was a little white disc on her tongue dissolving in the close ups yeah. they would do with her afterwards. You know, it's like, okay, she's got Alka Seltzer in her mouth, like she's supposed to be foaming like a rabid dog or something now. Um, I, so this is one where the gimmick, uh, you know, overtakes the match. They actually had a fantastic match. Uh-huh. And um, if ever there was any question as to whether or not there was something maybe wrong with Alexa Bliss. Right. And she had really stopped wrestling for the longest period of time. It would be really easy to think maybe she's injured and can't go anymore. And that's why right. the gimmick. But tonight, yeah. she wrestled a full-form match, and it was a fantastic full-form match up into the into the crappy ending, which, you know, we sort of saw coming that would, in, in some ways, I think they used some restraint in that they didn't do as much smoke and mirrors as they normally did with, uh, right. you know, a hocus pocus. Still, the whole doll angle doesn't interest me, and so I was disappointed that such a great match ended on a bum note. Uh, when I really didn't expect it to be much of a match at all and was very pleasantly surprised. I did because of my positioning, and of course they're not putting this on camera, saw Alexa going underneath the announce desk. She was underneath uh, where uh, Jimmy, Corey, and, and, and the crew were, uh, and that's where she got her Alka Seltzer from. So, uh-huh. uh, and, yeah, that, yeah. And I, I will say this, too. I don't like the gimmick as much as I like the person, but right. I don't know if it's the gimmick that's over because in past pay-per-views we've noticed she gets great reaction. Mm-hmm. Now tonight, of course, she's playing in front of her hometown crowd. Right. She's from Columbus. she's from Columbus. That crowd was so into her. Honest to goodness, I wanted to try to for the the viewers uh, that are watching us, you know, to really fully give the in-person experience. Try to take note of who got the best reactions. It may have been if not the pop of the night for Alexa, I'd say maybe, maybe top three easily for our best crowd reactions to her. Uh, it may be even in spite of the character. I don't know. And I know obviously again, hometown gives you a little bit of, uh, maybe extra, uh, shine there than she gets in most of the arenas, but, uh, fans love her. So, um, I would love to see them clean up the gimmick a little bit. If you're going to go with it, I'm fine with the Harley Quinn gimmick. Uh, in the same way, I'm fine with the Undertaker gimmick. I didn't like it back in the uh, '90s because it was all smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I showed that you can uh, still wrestle and and sell and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, mix in the gimmick, but don't give us the deep finish and you know play up the in ring stuff and let the rest of it be the window dressing, not the other way around. I'm in total agreement with you, brother. So this next one, this Damian Priest, Jeff Hardy, Sheamus, I caught the beginning and then I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, this I will one, throw it I can fill in the blanks for you what you missed if you uh, if you didn't see much of anything. I was, this was this was the beginning of me being in and out for a few matches as I struggled uh, to 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 stay, stay with the, the show, not because of the show or the quality of the show itself, but again, because of my medical situation and my medication at this point in the, in the night. But um, it looks like uh, priest, you know, came out on top of Hardy and Seamus, but I'm not exactly sure how it happened. So uh, to be perfectly honest, um, it was a bit of a rough night at the office for Damian priest. Uh, this match was a little sloppy and all the botches, seemed to involve him. There was one where he was, uh, you know, uh, on the ring apron and I guess was supposed to be a, a, sort of doing the uh, the forearm uh, smashes the way that Sheamus does to Sheamus, uh, you know, sort of return the favor. And, and before he had a chance to sweep Sheamus's leg, 
Uh, he, he just fell off the ring apron to the floor and had to get back up and do it again. Um, there was another spot where it looked like it was maybe some sort of neck breaker spot with uh, Jeff Hardy, but they just kind of fell down and fell backwards. And I don't know that it was Hardy. I believe it was Priest. Okay. Um, I that sloppiness. I think this is one where the hot crowd sort of pulled the guys through because without a doubt, to my surprise, top of the night, no question. Ben Balor, any of the guys, nothing compared to people still love Jeff Hardy. Like, love Jeff Hardy. That crowd could not get enough of him to the point that when Damian Priest won, even though he's the face, people were booing. Hey, Brother Nero rocks <laughs> to this day. <laughs> I mean, we know that he's on the back end. There's, a, there's definitely more, uh, you know, more road behind Jeff Hardy than in front of him. But, you know, dude's a Hall of Famer, no doubt. And he still went. I mean, the, you know, he wrestled hard tonight uh, doing the swan top to, to break up the pins and, and all of that. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was saved by Jeff Hardy's popularity and the hard work of all three guys to overcome a bit of sloppiness. And, again, the crowd stayed with them. So it was an entertaining match, and Damien did retain. Yep. Hey, I'm going to throw up some comments here from, from our, our third yeah. man. Do it, because I'm driving and I can't see comments. You're going to have to tell me what the people are saying. Yeah, and and, and again, I'm I'm not the best to be dri driving all of our, our things tonight. But first of all, Poole had a comment about pulverizing the kidney stone like AEW a pulverizes their demographics. <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah, he's in agreement with you too, man. That there are there are a couple botches on on that one that I I struggled to make it through. So, yeah, then, and it, it, you know, it's too bad because I like Damian a lot. Extremely talented big man. Um, and yes, he, even though he did get booed because the crowd just wanted Hardy that bad, uh, sure. they, the end of it. If you missed it, uh, they did the whole uh, passing of the torch kind of spot where you know Hardy comes into the ring and and. Uh, Damien picks him up off the ground and they hug and, you know, and, and Jeff sort of, you know, does the clap and points to Damien kind of thing. So, okay. you know, All right. that's cool. some of the rub goes there and maybe that's what they were trying to do with that. But uh, the crowd definitely wanted to see Hardy. That's cool. I wonder, I wonder if that was a little improv by Hardy to make sure that the right guy got the right rub there too, you know, so. so a veteran like that, you know, doing something like that on the fly, it would not surprise me uh, being able to read a crowd that well. Yeah. So let's bounce on to this Becky Lynch, Bianca, uh, Bel Air match. I was, I struggled with this one too. This what this is probably going into it. What I would have said was probably going to be the match of the night. I've got the feeling that wasn't necessarily the case, and yeah, I'm not real happy with the like screwy endings like we had a couple of times tonight. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll, I'll I'll forgive this one the way the way it was a screwy ending with a DQ ending. <laughs> well, yeah, it was uh, okay. Let you're right. Let's just tell the folks who won if they if you're watching this and you and and you didn't watch the show yet. Uh, there has not been a title change. Becky's still your champion. The story of this match obviously was the ending where you have the return of the boss Sasha Banks, yes. who has not been seen since pre SummerSlam when she was supposed to be the one. Uh, taking on Bianca for that title when instead Becky came. And uh, this time around, we didn't get a 26-second match, thank goodness for us, because right. um, in the arena, this was the second match of the night that uh, earned a uh, This Is Awesome chance. And while I don't think it quite earned it to the extent that the Street Profits and uh, the Usos did for the work, it was definitely going in that direction. It was a hot match, and I think I, like you, I just don't like screwy finishes, even if it does mean the return of Sasha Banks. I'm fine mm -hmm. with, with you doing it once, but after the doll ending and the other women's match, you should have had – I mean, if Sasha could still come back and cost somebody the match, that would have mm -hmm. been just as a DQ. Someone could have lost and lost nothing if Sasha had attacked them. Um, there's also something a little strange about him, uh, you know, having a match on extreme rules and having DQs. So I, agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, that's that's something I was as while watching this tonight. I'm like, where is the actual extreme in all this? Where is the ECW inspired shenanigans that you know Extreme Rules actually comes from? We didn't really see a lot of that tonight, but 
<laughs> you know, Becky retains, the boss is back, and it looks like uh, things are going to heat up on Friday night, at least until people start getting swapped around with the uh, draft coming up. And if you can forgive the ending of this one, it is definitely one of the matches. If you were going to only uh, tune in for a few, this, this is one you should catch. So the balls coming back, you know, woke me up. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I, I was, I was, uh, I, I was ready for this, uh, this main event with Reigns and the Demon Balor. Um, how how was that Balor entrance live? The the fans could not wait for that entrance. Um, it, it it got one of the biggest pops of the night just when the arena went dark. Um, I understand why they saved him to come out last, but I know we talked about it on the show before. And mm-hmm. even though I'm there in person, and I get why they do it just because of the spectacle that it is. On the other hand, I still say your champion needs to come out last. Roman has a heck of an interest on, entrance, entrance mm-hmm. on his own, especially with uh, Heyman hemming it up at his side. I don't think the Demon entrance loses anything if they had had it first and still had your champion come out last. Right. But, the, the crowd ate up the the, uh, uh, the entrance live. It looked pretty cool. I don't know how it came across on TV, but yeah, in person. To, to, me, to me personally, it seemed a little short, maybe a little rushed, maybe abbreviated is probably a better word. But again, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm medicated and, and, ba- and battling very painful things right now. So my, my, my perception may be altered slightly, but it did seem, you know, it, I wanted more demon. I wanted a bigger entrance, but you know, we got what we got. And I was also just, and this is just a slight nitpick of mine that the, uh, the body paint wasn't as full or as, as really as it looked, it, it didn't look as good as it has in the past. I mean, usually he's rocking some sort of really cool, like venom inspired get up with, with the demon. And he had that tonight, but not as cool as it looked in the past. So do you think the uh, uh, slightly less paint might have been the difference in victory and defeat tonight? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, I will say in the arena, Doug, uh-huh. this is, I guess I sort of started to get why it was uh, they saved the extreme rules for just one match. And I guess sometimes I like to, you know, like a lot of us uh, do that, that like to critique this stuff. Sometimes we, you know, it's hard. We're, we're, we're a tough group to satisfy. You know, yeah. we, we, we want it both ways. And I think I probably, I know that I have in the past complained about, you know, having extreme rules pay-per-views and having things like where you just, every match is a stipulation and it just, and then I complained that, well, this is extreme rules. Where are all the extreme matches right. at? They saved it for one. Throughout the night, the crowd, the only thing that was hotter than uh, Jeff Hardy was tables. Like, they really wanted like tables. tables so yeah. bad that by the time it came in the final match, it just like that light bulb moment of like, ah, uh, uh-huh. I see. <laughs> the problem in the past that I have myself complained about with these all – uh, stipulation pay-per-views. You know, you have a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Every match is a Hell in a Cell, or you have four of them or whatever. By the time you get to the last one, you've really stacked a deck against those men or women uh, for what they can do and get a reaction from. Tonight, all Roman Reigns had to do is say, no, I'm not pulling out that table. And that was the biggest heel pop of the night because they wanted it so bad because they hadn't seen it in every other match before it. So that was one of those light bulb moments for me where I'm like, yeah, this match is probably benefiting the reactions on these spots and a main event is probably benefiting because they didn't see that in a pre-show match. And I've got to say, I think the most awesome thing I did see tonight in this pay-per-view was Reigns masking up to go out into the crowd. (laughs) Uh, I... Loved that. Here's a man with a compromised immune system because of, you know, a disease he's, he's battled, you know, the majority of his life at this point, recognizing that, you know, he's putting himself in danger to entertain everybody. So he masks up, you know, to go out into the crowd. I, I'm not sure what the mask situation was, but we are, we are still in a global pandemic. And I saw, I saw a lot, lot fewer people in masks than, uh, 
than it, than needed to be. So, but I thought I, that was really cool. <laughs> that was extremely cool, and one of my absolute favorite moments of the night too. Fortunately, he did that pretty close to where I was, so I could see it. That's one of those subtleties that I could have easily missed had I been sitting. Uh, anywhere else and not watching on TV. But, yeah, that was absolutely classy. Um, as far as the mask situation goes, I felt pretty good going in because uh, Columbus has a mask mandate. And okay. if you didn't have a, have a mask, they give you one at the door. So I thought, I feel, I feel more comfortable. That's oh. great. And then you get in, and everyone, I'm sure, got their mask and put them mm-hmm. on when they sat security. And as soon as they sat down, they took them off. Uh. So. I mean, including the folks next to me, which didn't make me very happy, but what are you going to do when it's right. like you're that numbered? I'd say it was probably, even though everyone is mostly required, I bet it was 70, 30 uh, of people that uh, actually took them off, even though they were supposed to keep them on, which was unfortunate. But Roman Reigns, my tribal chief, was setting a good example tonight. Yes, indeed he was. And yeah, I think it was the Corey Graves that made the uh, the comment to keep to keep it in a heel context that Roman Reigns says he's not going to breathe the, the same air as these you know fools in uh, Ohio or something like that. <laughs> well, but, having been among the fools in Ohio, he made a smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we are not a political uh vax anti-vax show or mask an, or no mask show you know i uh, i tend to rant sometimes so let's get back to the wrestling so i thought this was pretty cool throughout i, I think it was one of the lesser main events that i've seen the travel chief in <clears throat> in a while um i the the ending is just really screwy, and I'm not sure how this looked, but the the demon resurrection when they start the heartbeats and the music and everything, not sure how that looked uh, live, but it just looked terrible, like stupid, like you know, Plan Nine from Outer Space kind of kind of nonsense when he's flopping around like a dead fish to to his heartbeats. I'm not sure how it went over live, but. Uh, it went over great live just because the fans were happy to see the demon getting back into it. But I, as soon as it started, I thought, well, this is why they didn't do any of the hocus pocus smoke and mirrors uh, bit during uh, a Lexus match because they were obviously saving it for this moment uh, to hopefully get the reaction at least live that they did. Um, like you, though, even though I'm there live, I'm thinking, uh, no, I don't care for it. <laughs> don't like it. Don't um, like it. The action itself was good. Uh, I will say that I could, uh, for those of us in attendance, there was a little less uh, intrigue about at least the layout of the match and what was going to happen because as the vignette aired beforehand between matches, there was a mad scramble of WWE personnel uh, throughout the entire arena, setting up tables, uh, uh, throwing you know the kendo sticks under uh, – you saw the guys in the ring, even though it was the dark, we're supposed to be looking at the screens, watching the vignettes. You know, I'm watching what, what are they doing in the ring with those lights? So I'm like, okay, they're gimmicking the ropes. So even that part was a little foreshadowed for us because they were doing something to the top turnbuckles, which now obviously I know what they were doing was setting that uh, ending up, which is, is a variation on uh, ending that's gotten big reactions in the past. We've seen the ring collapses before. Um, we've seen r- uh, ropes break. I don't know I can remember uh, seeing anyone scale and ascend the ropes and have them break while they were up on the rope, um, which in fact live looked kind of cool, but I wanted to see a clean finish. I didn't expect Finn to win, um, but after having a couple other not-so-clean finishes earlier, I would have only been happy if it had been Lesnar that cost somebody the match, and we would have got a, a actual pinfall out of that. Um, I would have preferred not to have the slip and fall be the ending, but uh, it did look good, that part did, on, on uh, in, in the arena. And it did get an uh, This Is Awesome chance going the third uh, the, the third and final, obviously being the last match. But the third uh, three matches got uh, This Is Awesome chance uh, to get a rise out of the crowd, that being one of them. Uh, but I don't know that the ending uh, didn't also uh, disappoint folks who, in large, were still sitting around at the end of that thinking that something else was going to happen uh, mm. except Lesnar to, to come and he did not 
Yeah, and I'm not sure if it, how how it went over uh, live, but Reigns Reigns was doing a lot of sailing of uh, some sort of divine inter- acknowledgement of divine intervention there saving him. So I'm not sure if this marks a a potential change in our character that it took divine intervention to save him from a demon, <laughs> or as he goes to battle with the beast, and if he becomes you know God's favorite champion <laughs> and steals the world. I'm not. I'm not sure where that where they're going with any of that. But to me, anyway, it seemed that there was a lot of uh, a, a lot of sailing of divine intervention there, and and the the you know the bloodline number one turned more to a pointing up to the to the heavens kind of thing in recognition there. So yeah, I'm I'm not sure where we go from here. I hope that they actually do go somewhere around that route. That's uh, I think that could be kind of cool to see a. Uh, that bit of, of character work, uh, a little tweak uh, in our in our tribal thief. Uh, not that what is going on right now isn't working, but uh, I think it's working so well because they just keep adding layers, uh, you know, from the Usos and Heyman to now the Lesnar situation. And so, yeah, any twist they throw into it, uh, keep doing what he's doing, man, because he is he's still one of the, the best things going on on the WWE television, especially. He absolutely is. So overall, my the takeaways from this pay per view are: I need to go back when I'm in a less medicated state and watch <laughs> the Street Profits and the Usos again, because it sounds yeah. like you know that's that's what you're calling probably match of the night. Then you think that would be my match of the night, and I think it probably had the best reaction outside of uh, uh, maybe the main event. And there's something that obviously Bianca and Becky. Uh, would be the those would be the three I would say yeah. honestly I know I'm influenced by the live crowd uh, starting this is awesome chance but you know I, in all three instances the, I think they had it right in that those were they were choosing the best matches they were seeing and those were the three and I'm I should have mentioned this you know normally I work off a ton of notes and now I'm like you know trying not to get lost while, while talking but I should have <laughs> mentioned this about Bianca and Becky Doug but uh, with with Becky Lynch, they're going to have a hard time keeping her heel because mm-hmm. Bianca her was a made woman at WrestleMania, and people love Bianca Belair, but right. they don't really want to boot Becky. Right from the get-go, she got a mixed reaction when she came out. The match starts, and I think what helped elevate that match up to the, to the interference at the end was not just the talent and the strength shown by Bianca, but the talent of both women and the exchanges. But the fact that the crowd was, I'd say, 60-40 uh, Becky Lynch. There was, let's go Becky, and then an EST, EST would follow. Yeah. But, but I don't know if it came across on TV, but the let's go Becky chants were louder. And she was hair pulling. She was tight pulling. She was bad-mouthing the crowd. She was doing everything she could to get that crowd to turn on her. And it got to the point that at least I, you know, for the live crowd, maybe it wasn't, maybe they stayed away from it on TV or talking about it. But she, at the end, sort of leaned into it and just was acknowledging it a little bit because it was so overwhelming uh, crowd support for her, uh, which, of course, gets a little overshadowed because people then got happy to see Sasha, just happy to see Sasha going after both women. Right. Um, if, if they, if they're not careful, uh, you know, you, you could get uh, Bianca getting booed. She could get the uh, old school Becky treatment <laughs> where people turn on her uh, because they like somebody else even more. And they, they still love them some Becky. Well, you know, we have a, a bigger heel to work now since Sasha's back. So I think that that problem kind of solves itself, you know, if, or with with Sasha back because Sasha goes after both of them. <laughs> Becky, you know, reels it in, realizes the error of her ways, and then they go after a bigger threat. Maybe, maybe or something like that. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm armchair booking at uh, almost midnight on a Sunday night while <laughs> battling your kidney stone. <laughs> so, um. Hey, well, I think we just wrapped up. We just zoomed through all the um, all the matches and uh, Extreme Rules 2021, and we got a live perspective, which was very awesome. Thanks for calling in. Or did you call in? I mean, what do we call this? Is it a call in? <laughs> I, I, I decided that uh, I could have the video uh, with you instead of my avatar, but uh, I would either be holding the phone while trying to drive, which would be dangerous, 
or yeah, I would have to hide a light on at night, which would be dangerous. I'm like, ah, instead of you all seeing like a dark inside of my cabin of my car, we'll do it this way. And it turned out it, this worked out really good. And it was, it was fun to be there live. And, and thank you for uh, driving us tonight. I'm doing the literal driving, but you're doing the figurative driving behind the scenes. And I appreciate the heavy lift. Uh, you, you've heavy lifted many a time for us, brother. Um, I'm down to 12% of my laptop, so I think we should wrap. Uh, and, and you need to get home safely, and I need to go lay down for a little while. <laughs> and One quick plug. Next week, we're back at 8. We are back at 8, and hopefully I will have no kidney stones by then. <laughs> and it is our, it'll be, this week is the WWE draft. It starts on Friday. It concludes on Monday. Our show's going to be in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate what happened on night one, what we think may happen on, on night two. And as a fun bit of uh, draft uh, uh, work is we're going to look back at the last draft and the mock draft does that you and I did and the, the wrestlers we selected and how they have fared over the last year in WWE. And are oh. they even part of WWE? So some of these folks, uh, even though we thought we'd build our promotions around them, apparently didn't oh. have some different ideas so that'll be a lot of fun that will be a lot of fun thanks for joining us tonight everybody thanks for kevin for being our our man on the scene tonight everybody stay safe we will see you next week goodbye everybody